<laughs> My name is Igor Tolstoy. I'm a product manager in the Kotlin team. The Kotlin team biggest goal is to make Kotlin enjoyable for everyone who uses it. My job is to understand what actually makes you to enjoy Kotlin and what pieces you off. I spend lots of time analyzing different signals like analytics, U-track, tweets, articles, spoken feedback. Some of these findings are fun, some of them are even useful. One aspect that certainly makes you enjoy Kotlin less is IDE performance. You know that feeling when you type something in the IDE and auto-completion window is not that fast to appear. It's not that long to completely break your flow state, but each time it feels irritating. Our common way to monitor ID performance regressions are benchmarks. We have a suite of nightly automated tests that verify if the time for auto-completion window to appear remains the same after introducing new changes. The tricky thing here is that we can test it only on so many scenarios, while the reality is much more complex. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, if you want to see the real world performance, you have to gather data from production users. We implemented several data collectors that started collecting performance metrics from real users, though, of course, those who explicitly opt in into, share, into data sharing. And stranger things happened. The data directly and openly tells us that the code auto-completion works faster on weekends. What the hell? I, I, I really, I, I perfectly understand why some popular website, for example, kotlinlang.org, may work faster when there are less people using it. But ID showing auto-completion window faster is something that my life hasn't prepared me for. But okay, okay, uh, you, you know, uh, this knowledge actually can be useful. Uh, imagine that you're working on a large project and you're really frustrated with the performance. Now, you have a very straightforward way to resolve the issue. Just, you know, uh, stop the work and return to it on Saturday and like chill the rest of the week. Uh, the rest of the week. Uh, we can even resolve u track tickets with this advice. Like, someone complains about performance and we like, uh, yeah, it was slow, but you just picked a wrong day for work. Chill, rest a bit, let it flow, return in a few days, everything will be fine. Okay, okay. I hope that maybe some of you already have theories of why it happens. Uh, just hold them. Uh, I will definitely ask you for a theor theorious, theorious uh, in the end of my talk, and I will give an explanation a bit later. But before I do so, I want to share a couple of other stories from my life as a Kotlin product manager. When I joined the Kotlin team, one of my first tasks was to understand what hinders adoption for Kotlin multi-platform. As a good product manager, I talked to people who tried Kotlin multi-platform about problems they faced. Some of them mentioned Gradle build setup shortcomings, some of them talked about the lack of libraries or educational materials and other things. But one point remained consistent. All of them were complaining about the complexity of Kotlin native memory model. Okay, uh, you know, the product manager's job is not that difficult because when many different people name the same problem, that's usually real. But you know, the memory management is complex, doesn't actually give you lots of insights of what exactly the problem is. There is no one simple answer for question what should we fix to make uh, people's lives better. Uh, everyone remembers their overall feeling, they can provide some context, but they won't give a precise answer on what exactly needs to be fixed. Here is what we've done. We've compiled a list of unclear to users Kotlin native memory model aspects, for each of them, we prepared a code sample, uh, actually a code and its supposed output. 
Uh, these samples were packed into a survey, and for each of them, there were two questions. The first one was, do you expect the result, uh, do you expect the same result of running the code as in the output, uh, the output that is printed in the sample? And do you have some rationale behind your answer? Okay. Before I show you res uh, the results, let's play a little. Uh, those of you who have experience with the old Kotlin native memory model, please raise your hands so that I will know uh, the audience. Okay, perfect, that's even better. Uh, this snippet is not that difficult. It like has a main function which, calls, uh, which uh, modifies uh, a mutable state in, a, in an object, so uh, please, uh, let's, let's try to guess what the output will be. Those of you who think that this code will print one, please raise your hands. Okay, okay, okay there, are, there are only two options, so better raise your hand now. Uh, the second option is that it will throw a runtime exception. So you have experience with the old memory model, right? Yeah, and this turned out to be a very illustrative example. 60% of respondents were sure that this code will work, while with the old memory model, it always throws runtime exception because you, you can just go and access uh, the mutable state in a shared object. It's like prohibited. Uh, and the majority of people really had a rational behind this answer. That means that in their head, they had a mental model that led them to wrong answers about how Kotlin native works. We had 12 puzzlers, uh, samples, that covered the majority of concepts of Kotlin native memory management. And all of them, except one, were unpredictable for developers. They really were mistaken everywhere. What made the picture worse is that newcomers, just like you, you're a newcomer for an old memory model, uh, made even more mistakes. You know, these results can be fixed by adding a better tooling, writing documentation, or like doing marketing. Uh, the core concepts of memory management turned out to be flawed. Uh, it were dif they were difficult to grasp by both newcomers and experienced developers. It was clear for the team that we should completely rethink our approach to Kotlin native memory model. And a couple of years later, we have a Kotlin native garbage collector going stable. It fixes all unpredictable aspects of the old scheme and makes the behavior of Kotlin native code the same as Kotlin JVM. If, you, if any of you dropped multi-platform because you didn't like the old scheme, you can try, you can give it one more shot, but luckily you are not of, uh, of this segment of people. Okay, fortunately, not all the problems in the Kotlin team require, you know, implementing your own garbage collector from scratch. Otherwise, it, it will be a huge problem. There was this another story about ranges in Kotlin. Actually, range is a relatively simple concept. It's just, you know, it's a sequence of numbers. We use it literally everywhere in for loops, if conditions, or as generators for creating collections. In Kotlin, there are four different ways to declare a range, but uh, we are interested in two of them. One is double dot, and one is until. The biggest difference between them is that uh, one of them creates an open range, and one of them creates a closed range. Closed range includes its right limit, open range doesn't include its right limit. For a long time, we had anecdotal feedback that um, it's difficult that developers forget which of these declarations means what. So please raise your hand those who definitely understand what type of range is created by double dot and what type of range cre is created by until. Okay, half of you, that's, that's a big problem. Uh, and uh, that creates problem both when you write code because you may, you know, accidentally make uh, one, have one more item to iterate over or when reading code on a place like GitHub. Kotlin is a language designed to be safe and uh, help you not to miss an error. That was an obvious case to be fixed. 
We already had a potential solution proposed by the development team, a new operator, dot dot less, replacing until. However, implementing a new operator for such frequent use case is not something that we should do based only on anecdotal feedback. We wanted to be sure that it, it will really fix the problem. As already mentioned, ranges are used in a variety of contexts. To design a research, we had to understand which of them are most frequent. Luckily, there is one million of Kotlin repositories on GitHub, and that makes a perfect data source to study how developers declare ranges. One more quiz time. I will show you a couple of pieces of code, and you have to guess which operator is used more often exactly in this context. Like here we have a for loop, uh, which iterates over a range. Which operator is used more often? Those of you who think that it is double dot, please raise your hand. Those of you who think it's until. Okay, I think 50-50. Uh, uh, until is used in 67% in of cases. Okay, next one. We declare a property that uh, has a range. Which operator is used more often in this case? Double daughters, raise your hand. Okay, now until team, strike. Uh, and yes, in this case, really, people usually use double dot. The last one, if condition, okay, double dots. Until team, yeah, until team re revenges. But actually, it's also double dots, so folks, you were right. Uh, here is the overall distribution of different ways to declare ranges in Kotlin. You can see that uh, these operators are really different. Each of them has its own use. Uh, in different contexts, they are used differently. So, okay, our goal was to reduce the number of errors due to the ranges misuse. The new operator is useful if developers make less mistakes interpreting it. All we have to do is to compare them in similar circumstances. Here is what we've done. We took three contexts where the until operator is most widely used. Uh, we built two code snippets for each of these contexts, one with old syntax, one with new syntax. Each of them had four answer options, only one of them was correct. And we compared two things, the error rate and time spent answering each snippet. And luckily, the new operator really won. It performed best in the for loop, showing 25% improvement uh, in error rate, 16% improvement in forage, and 10% better in map. 25% less errors in the most frequent usage scenario is definitely a good reason to introduce a new operator, even if it requires you know, updating documentation, tutorials, and so on. That's a really good boost. The new operator is soon going to be stable in 1.9.0. You can use it in your, pre, uh, in your projects and define ranges like a pro. Uh, I came up with this phrase, so it's really great. Define ranges like a pro. You know, it's fun being a product manager for a programming language. You constantly face a stream of problems that don't have uh, really straightforward solutions. And I think that it's not unique for my job. Next time, when you will be designing an API that should be consumed by someone else, think if you can apply a product thinking to it. Like, uh, define a problem that you are solving, collect a context about your users to understand in which circumstances they face this problem. Check if the problem is really, really that important, as important as you think, and before rushing to implementing a very clever and complex solution, uh, think of how you can validate if it actually helps your user, if it actually helps uh, solve the problem. Sometimes your findings may really surprise you, just like code auto completion that works faster on weekends. Okay, it's time to get back to the first story because my time is always, uh, is always uh, I think, gone. Let's find out what was happening. 
Those of you who have an answer, please raise your hand for the first right answer. I will give you, I wanted to give you a t-shirt, but everything that I got was 20 similar pins with old Kotlin logo. They're great. I really have a bag of pins for you. Uh, so th anyone, why code auto, auto completion works faster on weekends? Yes? Mm, uh, good idea, but not. Uh, any, anyone else? Um, oh, here was a hand first. Yes, and that's basically it. Auto completion. Yes. <laughs> Our auto completion algorithms are dependent on the size of your project. The bigger the project, the more symbols it has the slower auto-completion works. <coughs> Developers usually spend their time on weekends working on smaller projects and less on mid-sized projects that, uh, uh, by the way, what's surprising is that large pro the amount of large projects is the same, but anyway, we see it in our analytics. Smaller projects, faster auto-completion for each specific person, faster is the average value. Okay. Thanks for listening to my talk. Next time, when you see in Kotlin Twitter a uh, call for participation in UX study or in a survey, please, please take part in it. You really help make Kotlin the most enjoyed programming language. And of course, follow me on Twitter. It's Hey Tolstoy, it's my Twitter, follow it. Definitely do it. Uh, if you will need help, by, if you will have some product problems and you want to discuss it, reach me, I'll be happy to talk about it. Thank you.